Hello and welcome to amadman.com YouTube channel. And in this video, we will discuss about attributes in ABAP local class. So first thing is before we actually start with discussing about attributes and different types of attributes like instance attribute, static attribute, let us first understand what is an attribute. Now attributes are called as class variables. So attributes can also be referred as class variables. And uh, attributes obviously are defined inside a class. When we define the class, we define the attributes and they are basically used to store data in the object class. In other words, like whenever we define an object of the class, then the attributes will be used to store data for that object. Now, there are two kinds of attribute in ABAP. So we have the instance attribute and then we have the static attribute. So as we might be aware of the fact that in ABAP, we have components that is class components, which could be either a instance component or a static component. So for that reason, we do have instance attributes and static attributes. So let us first understand what is an instance attribute. Now, instance attributes are created for each instance of the class, which means that whenever we create an instance of the class, we basically get object specific instance attributes. So instance attributes are primarily object specific and they are created separately, separately for each instance of the class. We use the statement data to create an instance attribute. So once we see the program, we will understand it. And what is a static attribute? So if we talk about static attributes, then static attributes are not instance specific. So static attributes are not instance specific and they exist only once for all instance of the class, which means that we, we can have multiple instances of the class and all those multiple instances will share a common static attribute. So whatever static attributes are defined, that will be shared across all the instances of the class. So that is basically static attribute. Whereas instance attribute, they are instance specific and for every object or every instance of the class, we will have a separate instance attribute. Fine. So both these attributes, whether it is instance or static, ultimately they are going to store data. Then uh, how do we define an instance attribute? We basically use the statement class data to define a static attribute. Then what are constants? So you might be familiar with constants. Constants is uh, available in our uh, procedural ABAP programming also. And there, whenever we define a constant, we cannot change its value. So that same concept of constant comes to object-oriented ABAP as well. That is, once you define a constant, you cannot change its value, neither from within the class, that is by using a method, nor from outside the class, that is by using an object. So the value cannot be changed from within the class as well as from outside the class, right? Should not be changed or cannot be changed. Now, apart from these three, that is instance, static, and constants, we can also define an attribute with read-only addition. Now, this is a unique scenario. Read-only addition is a unique scenario. And in this, basically, what happens is that if you define a attribute with read-only, then this attribute can be accessed from outside the class, right? So they can be accessed from outside the class but cannot be modified from outside the class, right? And they can only be modified by a method of the class. So these are the important points to understand. When you define a attribute with read only, it can not be modified from outside the class, but can be accessed from outside the class. And if you want to modify it, you have to use a method to modify the attribute with addition read only and uh, second point is that a read only attribute should always be defined under the public section of the class 
so these are some theoretical informations related to attributes especially instance attributes static attribute constants and read only and let us try to create a program to understand these things practically so we will switch to our sap system and in this system we will create a new program for understanding the concept of attributes so let us start with the class definition so let's say we name the class as lcl and the class definition will always end with end class and obviously we have to define a visibility section we will keep all our attributes as of now under the public section so that we can access it by creating an object now now let us try to define some attributes here so for example let's say i define local attribute and uh, let's say we say local attribute one type integer and we define a static attribute using the class data keyword and we name it as local op, local attribute two again type integer and then we define a constant local attribute three type integer and for constant we have to provide a value uh, which will be stored in inside the constant so let us give a value 10 to it okay now this is my class definition you might be already aware of how we define a class now do we need an implementation of this class do we have to write the implementation code so actually the answer is no because uh, this class doesn't have any method so we don't really need to define an implementation of this class okay now post this how can we access these attributes right so these are the components of the class like in this particular case i have created these three uh, attributes which are known as the components of the class how we can access these attributes so if you are uh, you know doing this uh, object oriented about programming for local class for the very first time then uh, very first thing is that we will have to create an object of the class all right and then we can access it so one way is like for example if you want to access the component of a class so use the class name so not all components can be accessed using the class name and we will try to understand that how do we use the class name to access an attribute basically we follow the syntax that is class name followed by equal to and greater than symbol assignment operator and followed by the attribute name or the component name so this is how we use the class name to access an attribute then next uh, we can create an object and uh, we can access the attributes using the object name so if you are using the object then you must follow the arrow operator you must use the arrow operator to access the attributes or the components of the class fine so first let us try to access these components using the class name so if i use the write statement and if i say local class followed by the equal to greater than symbol and then for example i want to access la1 so is it possible if i save this and check this i get an error there that uh, you know can only be specified with static attribute so we, we cannot do this statement so the reason we cannot do this statement because this is an instance attribute and you cannot access the instance attribute using the class name okay then let's say i write the statement lcl is equal to greater than la2 so what will happen in this particular case so let's say i write here cannot access instance attribute now if i check this scenario that is a static attribute i don't see any error perfect so it basically means that you can yes, can access static attribute and what about the constant 
So can we access the constant? LA3. Yes, great. So even we can access the constant. Can access the constant. Fine. So we, we just cannot access the instance attribute. And this is obvious because the instance attribute memory allocation will be done only when we create an instance of the class. Fine. So if we are like, for example, if we have not created an instance of the class, if we have not created an instance of the class, no memory allocation is done, right? No memory allocation is done for instance components of the class. So that is the reason we cannot access it. instance components. That also includes your attribute. So instance components of the class. So hence we cannot access it, but we can access these two things. So let's save it, check it, activate it, and let's see the result. So the result is zero and 10, which is but obvious because uh, you know, the default value of the default value inside this attribute is zero and we have assigned the value 10 to our constant okay <laughs> then let us define an object and we try to access these values all right so define an object of the class so object definition is a two-step process you might be aware of that so for example, first we have to create a reference. So I will say like local object type ref to LCL. And then I will use the statement create object hello to define the object, to instantiate the object. Now, once this statement is done, then memory allocation is done. So once this statement gets executed, memory allocation is done for that particular object. And all the instances, will be cre will be created right so la1 will get its memory allocation so now if i try to use the right statement and for example i say here new line okay then if i first try to use local object followed by la1 so is this good Yes, it is good. Now, if I say local object LA2, is this good? Yes, perfect. And if I say local object LA3, so all these things are fine. All these three statements are working. So if I activate it and if I execute it, I see this result so zero then this is the instance attribute this is the static attribute and this is the constant okay well and good now a few things that we can understand from here very well is that because this object was created memory allocation happened and hence an instance was generated right and uh, every attribute ca uh, gets a unique means for every instance a unique attribute uh, is or storage allocation is done so this is fine okay now if you want to change the value of this constant is it possible obviously it will not be possible so any statement like this for example local object la3 is equal to 20 will not work because we are trying to change the value of a constant so this is not possible then if i want to change the value of the static attribute obviously it is possible so you can access the static attribute both using the class name as well as the instance right uh, as well as the object or instance of the class and we can change its value so for example here if i give 20 is it possible yes obviously it is possible and uh, for example then if i use the right statement 
and then I use the class name to access this static attribute. So I should see the value 20. Right? Fine, I should see the value 20. So what is the key understanding here is that when you create a object, obviously a you can say memory allocation is done. So this is your object and memory allocation is done. And, uh, and if you define a constant as well as a, and if you define a constant as well as a static attribute that is using class data. So if you use these two statements, so for that also memory allocation is done. Fine. Now this constant and this class data, they are shared for all instances. So if I create one more object, so instead of you know showing this as object, let us better use a oval symbol. So for example, this is one object and this is another object. So for each object, let's say this is object one, I will have separate LA1. So here also, I have a separate memory allocation. So think of it, this is a memory allocation, this is a memory allocation, and let's say this is another memory allocation. So this constant and class data that we have defined inside the class, it will be shared. So it will be shared by this as well as it will be same will be shared by this also right so they are shared okay so for example if i create another object so if i go back here and i create another object for example two mention it as 2 then if I say local object 2 local object 2 and then we give L1 similarly write statement local object 2 then this is my static attribute LA2 and write statement local object 2 and then this is my constant LA3 and here if I choose new line, fine, if I save this, check this, activate this and execute this. So I see here 0, I see here 20 which is the shared static attribute and this is the same constant. So this technically indicates that the constants and the class data are shared across all the objects, right? But the instance attributes are created separately for each object all right so this is our understanding over here and uh, when it comes to read only that is having read only addition to this instance attribute that we will discuss when we will discuss about methods so that's all in this video Thank you for watching. If you like this video, then please subscribe and hit the bell icon.